Hi folks, thank you for tuning in for another video. Uh, on this one I'm going to be taking a look at the Cold Steel American Lawman. Now I've already done a review on this knife, so if you're interested please check that out. Uh, but tonight what I'm going to be doing is removing the coating from the blade. You actually see I did a little test there with some steel wool. So I'm going to be removing some more of that coating, hopefully all of it. And I'm also going to be removing the coating from the lock bar. And on my previous video, I think on my review, I mentioned that I actually scratched away a little bit of that. Uh, I forget with what. I think it was with a little Leatherman tool. I kind of just kind of gave it a few quick rubs with the Leatherman and kind of saw some of that coming off. So that comes off really easily. And then I took a little steel wool to the blade and was also able to get down to that nice kind of rough stonewash finish. So hopefully what I aim to do is, uh, you know, show you the disassembly so you can see the inner workings of the knife. And then also... Uh, remove all that coating and just have a nice sort of unfinished blade underneath, which I much prefer to the all black design. I know a lot of folks uh, like those black blades. Uh, it's okay. It's just I'm not I'm not really a big fan. I prefer just seeing the raw steel underneath. And uh, so let's get right down to it. I'm going to go grab my steel wool, and uh, I'll jump ahead to uh, starting to take this knife apart. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, I'm back. I've got my tools off to the side. I've grabbed a little chunk of steel wool from the garage. And uh, we'll go ahead and take this apart. Now, I've never taken this apart before. I'm going to go ahead and do it for the first time here on camera. So I see that um, we have a torque screw right there at the pivot. And I actually was checking with my drivers. I thought this was a T8. And, I, and forgive me if I actually mentioned it as such in my review. Um, I've used a T8 to tighten and loosen this. But I did notice this time that my T8 driver which in this case is a Craftsman, um, actually turns it but has a lot of play. And so I don't know if I didn't catch that the first time, but I went ahead and grabbed that little Pittsburgh tool that I showed in another video. And I kept trying different drivers till I got a snug fit. And it turns out that this is a T10 at the pivot. And then there's also one body screw um, towards the back of the handle. You can see it has a screw on each side. And that's a T6. So I'll go ahead and loosen this with the T10. That's something I'm not used to seeing. It's typically very common for that pivot screw to be a T8. And I guess in typical cold steel overbuilt fashion, you know, going for sort of that big brutish uh, build design, they went with a, with a larger size screw, a T10. So we'll go ahead and take that out of there. I'll put that to the side. And then I'll go ahead and if I can, I'll see if I can push out the rest of the, uh, the screw through the pivot there. She doesn't want to come just yet. Let me take that body screw out as well. I'll set the knife down. That is a T6, as I mentioned before. So I'll just push that up from the other side. And I'll begin to loosen that. And I'm not sure if that's spinning on both sides of the blade or not. No, it seems like it's coming up. I'll take that one out and put both of those in the background so you can see them. And then it's also got uh, a mating screw on the opposite side. Nothing seems to be coming apart just yet. Uh, let me work the other one out from the other side. I'm not sure if that's even necessary. Not really sure what to expect. I haven't taken even a uh, even a glance at uh, another disassembly video, so I'm not really sure what's going on in the handle or what to expect. I'm just sort of winging it here. So I'm back again. I didn't completely take it apart yet. Um, just kind of making this discovery with you as I go in this video. These rear pocket screws appear to need to be removed. I didn't, wasn't sure whether or not they were holding the body together or not, but it sort of seems like they are. And I just heard a notification on my phone there. Must have got a new email. But, uh, I can't imagine these would hold the body together, but you know they, they just might. So let's try taking those out. And uh, these are also T6, by the way, or at least it seems to be a snug fit when I run the T6 driver in there. And oh yeah, now I can feel it loosening up. So that was the trouble was my uh, my not expecting the pocket clip screws to be holding the body together, and now I can feel it prying apart. So let me set this down and see if I can do this without sending the blade and back spring and everything flying. I'm just sort of kind of wiggling the whole works back and forth together one side and then the other. 
not putting any crazy pressure there. And there we have it. So one G10 scale removed. And then you can kind of see uh, the other side. We've got uh, a plastic spacer here. We've got the back spring. And there's the blade with a nice big washer there. Try and back it out till it focuses. And there's that stop pin. And it's got sort of a rocker pin there. Pretty basic design, uh, which is actually pretty cool. And then I, I imagine, I think I'm calling this the back spring, but this would be that, that uh, lock bar. Uh, now, I also had some people mention to me, when I talked about the extreme tension that was on this knife, folks mentioned to me about loosening this bar. And uh, I'll cross that bridge another time. Tonight, I really just kind of wanted to show uh, the disassembly of the blade, and then I was going to go ahead and take the blade out and uh, hit it with some steel wool and try and clean that, uh, clean that coating off as best as I could. So I'll remove that washer there. We'll set that aside. And then I see that there is some sort of a, like a thin plastic washer. Very, very thin, likely Teflon. Um, let's see if we can kind of pry that up. That came up. You can see, oh, I'm trying to look over the camera and realize I took it out of frame. There's another one of those washers there. The other side of the blade is just blank. So I'm going to take this washer off. Wow, it's really thin. It's just paper thin. That little plastic or composite washer. And then I believe on the other side, that yeah, this has one of those plastic washers and another copper one on the outside. So these two washers stayed on that side as I removed the blade. Uh, pretty basic construction though. Really easy to take apart once I figured out the trick, the knack to it, which was that little uh, set of the series of pocket clip screws that were holding it together. And let me zoom out just a bit here so I can get it to focus in a little bit easier. And I'll kind of show you what I was doing with the steel wool. Now as my little test, and if you do do this at home, uh, be very careful because you do have the exposed blade. And so I haven't really decided what method to attack it with. And obviously I'm not going to spend the whole video removing this coating because it would probably bore you to tears and I imagine it's going to take several minutes. I just kind of wanted to show you the, uh, the start of the process. So I'm going to pull away a little bit of the steel wool and just show you what I did for my little test. I just kind of got in on a little portion of the blade and just kind of began rubbing a slightly circular motion. And as I did so, you can kind of see where it begins to scuff and wear. And so I pretty much just kept doing that until I got down to that bare metal. And I also did a little bit along the spine. You see it's bare there as well. And it looks, the metal underneath looks really nice. Now I imagine, uh, and I haven't really seen any videos, I've kind of read some tutorials or you know some posts online on, on some of the knife forms where folks have mentioned they've done this themselves. and. Uh, I haven't really seen a video or read a, a very detailed explanation of exactly what they did to remove the coating with steel wool, because I've read that method before, the steel wool removal method. Uh, but one thing that I'm going to try and be a little bit careful of is that I don't want to bald the metal or the coating in any place. So as I remove this and I start to get down to where the, the bare steel underneath becomes exposed, I'm going to take sort of a lighter and broader approach because I don't want to get shiny spots if you know what I mean when you bald the surface it means that you kind of are working in one spot too long and you'll have weird shiny patches I'm not even sure if that will uh, come from me using the steel wool that might not even happen you know it might take a lot more effort than I'm expecting to have that uh, phenomenon take place but I'm going to try and be careful not to do that and you can see that pretty quickly there I'm able to take away a little bit more of that coating and get right down to the metal and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull away from the camera and sit down for a few minutes and try and take off a good portion of this. I'll come back on and show you what it looks like. Um, and hopefully it won't take too long to complete the whole thing. But again, you don't want to sit here and watch me do this for 20 minutes. So I'll come back and give you a little update. See you in a moment. Okay, so I'm back. Um, as you can see, things are coming along swimmingly. Um, I just want to tell you, this is actually really super easy, and so I read from a lot of people online, you know, don't be afraid, just do it, get some steel wool, take you a few minutes, and they're right. I'm really happy to say that the coating comes off quickly, and you can kind of see that the finish comes out really even. 
Uh, there aren't any bald spots or shiny patches uh, that I can see at all and I was kind of scrutinizing this under some bright light. Just comes out really great. Um, cold steel, I don't know why you don't just release it like this. I love this stonewash finish. That looks amazing. Um, that's, that's just completely my preference. I think it looks so good. So I'm going to go ahead and take that all the way back. Um, I might leave the pivot area so that I don't mess with any tolerances. I'll see how that goes. I haven't made up my mind completely. Uh, this, obviously, the little uh, thumb stud actually can be backed out with a flathead screwdriver. So I'll remove that in this upcoming step as I work over to the other side. Uh, but this has only been about 10 minutes of work with two small pieces of steel wool, just a couple little tiny scraps, and just kind of gently kind of buff in side to side, then up and down, and then as it's almost worn away, I'll kind of go in a circular pattern uh, just to kind of help ensure that I don't wear in any uh, spots. And then as I get towards the edge of the blade, you can see it's all, it's all the way right down to the edge. It's still pretty easy to remove. Um, you can hear my cats hissing in the background probably. Uh, what I did was I set it down flat. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Uh, I set it down flat against the table on a piece of cardboard so that it didn't scuff up the table and just took that little piece of steel wool and just kind of buffed along back and forth along the edge. And that kind of, since the edge was kept fairly flush against the table, there wasn't really any risk. You can see my finger going is actually touching the surfaces completely. Uh, there wasn't really any risk of it, uh, you know, snagging or slicing me as I went. And that was very, very easy. So the, the portion along the edge went really quick since I was able to set it down against the table and, uh, and just kind of rub along very fast. So I'll take up the other side, I'll remove that thumb stud and see if I can't get the whole blade all polished up and I'll come back and give you a little update here shortly. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, back with another quick update. Here is the blade. As you can see, both sides are now stripped of any of that coating except right at the uh, at the pivot. I left some of the material um, probably not necessary but just in case it kinda helps with some of the tolerances between the washers at the pivot. Again it's such a minor amount of material it probably doesn't matter. I also left some at some of the mating surfaces at the back of the blade where it engages with the stop pin but at the bottom there kinda cleaned that all off, cleaned it all off along the spine uh, I think it looks fantastic. It really, you can't tell at all that it didn't come right from the factory like this. If you look at it up close, um, and if you choose to do this to your own blade, uh, I, I definitely recommend it. You're not going to run into any issues where it looks like you did something funky or anyone can tell. As long as you renew, remove enough of that uh, coating on the outside to where it's all one even finish, you're set. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and work a little bit of the same magic on the lock bar. As you can see, since I scratched some off, this should come off really quickly. I have a hunch this isn't even the same coating, but I'll see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit it with the steel wool. And uh, I'll probably, again, same as the other one, I'll probably leave it um, on the sides of the bar and just remove it on the visible portion on the back. I've got some steel wool on my fingers. The, the coating comes off. My fingers are kind of look kind of dirty because that material, as you're using the steel wool, it kind of comes off and gets everywhere. So I'll go ahead and uh, try and remove it along the spine of uh, the back spacer. And I might do the sides, haven't decided, but I'll just see how easily it comes off. And then I'll show you the finished knife. So I'll be back again shortly. Uh, by, by the way, this portion, as far as removing this much material from the blade, it's only been about 40 minutes, so pretty quick. You can probably knock the whole thing out in an hour if you uh, pay attention and buckle down and just do it as quick as possible. I'm kind of zipping right through it, and I'm, I'm really pleased with how quickly it's going. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so I'm uh, back. This will be the uh, final update as far as showing what I've removed before I put it back together. Uh, here's that same blade. I've put the thumb stud back in. And uh, I did try and remove that material from the thumb stud. It doesn't want to come off quite as easily, so I might spend a little bit more time with that later, being more aggressive. But for now, I'll just leave it like that. It's kind of a nice contrast, and uh, it was taking a little bit too much time. Uh, and then here is the lock bar. You can see there's still a little bit left on uh, that side surface. I left everything along the bottom and removed everything along the top, but I think the majority of what you'll see should look pretty clear and should match the blade pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this back together real quick. I'll do it off camera because it's going to be a little bit easier to align all the washers and then I'll come right back and show you the finished blade. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. This whole thing so far, uh, the lock bar, the blade, the disassembly, probably not more than an hour. I don't think it's been more than an hour. 
So uh, pretty quick, if you have this knife and you want to do this yourself, uh, have no fear. It's pretty easy if you've got the drivers and you've got a little bit of steel wool, you'll have it knocked out in no time, so definitely try it. I'll come right back with the completed and reassembled blade here in just one second. See you in a moment. Okay, so uh, here's the finished product. Uh, she's put back together good as new. Reassembly took about two minutes. Was not a problem at all. I uh, just popped the torque screws back in, tightened everything down, and I am very pleased to share that there is no play vertically, horizontally, no wiggle, no wobble. The lock bar works just as it always did. All of the surfaces still mate and the pivot is still perfectly smooth. So using the steel wool did not affect any of those internal workings and I'm actually confident that you could take the metal uh, or you could take that coating all the way down to the bare pivot at the base of the blade and you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, I don't see any weird shiny patches or any parts of the blade that seem to have suffered from having the steel wool used, used against them. So uh, just absolutely delighted at the surface. You can see the logo is still completely intact on both sides and uh, that remains even after you rub all of that coating off and I really like the way the lock bar looks very attractive matches the blade perfectly um, next I'll do the clip I, I'll probably save that for another day I think that's gonna probably take a little bit more work I'm gonna have to take it off there and really kinda rub it between my fingers with that steel wool to get that coating off uh, but that'll be for another time. Uh, for right now, I'm going to leave it just as is. You can see that the thumb stud remains. Uh, I believe that's a different type of coating. It's definitely not the same coating that's on the blade. So uh, I'm not sure what process you'd have to go through to remove it. But I kind of like the contrast. And I think that uh, considering how much more work it's going to be, I'll just leave it the way that it is. But I'm very pleased with the project. The whole thing took about an hour, maybe an hour and five minutes. Uh, from when I disassembled the knife to putting it all back together and finishing this video. So if any of you out there are interested in doing the same thing, definitely go ahead and take the leap. Don't worry about um, you know messing up the coating or you know ruining things in any way. Uh, don't worry about the inner workings becoming wobbly or you know sort of ruining the surfaces in there. You, you won't run into any of that. Um, and, and let this video be a testament to that fact. So if any of you are interested in removing that coating and getting a nice stonewash finish and uh, getting rid of that black coating or if you've scratched your black coating would just like to go for something a little bit cleaner looking, uh, go for it. Uh, I, this project comes highly recommended. It's quite easy. It'll cost you little to nothing as most of you probably already have the appropriate disassembly tool and uh, you probably also already have some steel wool kicking around in your garage or somewhere. So try it. I think it looks beautiful and uh, makes the knife a little bit more your own. You know, you kind of have the factory American Lawman and now you've got something that you kind of modified a little bit yourself. I could not be more pleased or more proud of this project. I think it was just super easy, super fun, and I think that the end result is great and well worth the effort. So there you have it, the disassembly and uh, coating removal on the blade and lock bar of the Cold Steel American Lawman. Uh, I hope you found this informative and I hope this will inspire some of you to try this project on your own. Maybe not just with this knife, with, but with any other knives that have that black coating you might want to remove. Uh, so thanks very much for coming along for the ride and it was a lot of fun and I hope to talk to you all soon. Bye.